You are now listening to the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast featuring D'Angelo Williams and Gary Barnage. You push play and they'll push the limits. It's your boy Tom here and we are back with another episode of the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast. Boy, it's going to be a special one today. We were just having a pre-production meeting. Let's go. How was your weekend, fellas? I, I'm ready to go. I, I don't really give a damn about what Gary did this weekend. Well, I, well, I, D, 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 let me interrupt you real quick because uh, we're going to do something different this time. Oh, so sure. for y'all that don't know, we're filming this today on a Sunday. It is D'Angelo's birthday. I am going to mute him until the end of the episode, and we are going to oh, roast him. We have oh, we're going to do a little surprise roast to D'Angelo, and he doesn't <laughs> talk until the very end. He gets a oh. joy. We're going to have a bunch of people coming on. So everybody just sit back and enjoy what's about to happen. Yes, D'Angelo, you didn't know it was coming. End of the episode, and then we'll allow you to talk. So you just sit back and enjoy for your birthday surprise. He was all prepared for all these little topics, and uh, we surprised him. <laughs> they roast. So D, enjoy. And I'm going to let time start off because our first guest has been on for a minute. So we're going to start off with us roasting you a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and kick off the segment, you know, because I got, I got a few little things to say for you, D. And you know what? It was funny, D, because – when Gary came at me was with this idea of roasting for your birthday, I was a little bit, I was like, I don't know how I feel about that because, you know, D'Angelo's done so much for me. And so, you know what, D'Angelo, I want to flip the script. I don't even want to roast you. I'm going to sit here and, and much like we do with Surf Story, I'm going to praise you, D'Angelo. I'm going to tell you why you are great. All right. <laughs> so here's why D'Angelo is great. Let me, let's talk about D'Angelo for a second. When D'Angelo walks into a room, his smile lights up the room. It's just, it's just noticeable. His smile lets everyone know that he is high on life. And the hat he wears over his eyes lets everyone know that he's high. And not only that, you got his rambling on and on and his inability to remember anything we talked about five <laughs> minutes prior. But that's neither here nor there. D'Angelo, some more about you that is great. You are great at helping others. Listen. Everyone knows about your foundation and what a blessing you are to the breast cancer community. But I want to talk about how great you were for the NFL. I've seen it for years. The amount of times that you handed over the ball to the other team so that they could win. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, D'Angelo, you were so great. No wonder you were one of the most loved NFL players of all time. I can't imagine. That's why everyone in the NFL loves you. But all the Panthers fans, we hate you. Next up, you are a great multitasker. D'Angelo, I remember when you came to Dallas to watch your Memphis Tigers in a bowl game, which they got destroyed in. You were out to eat with your kids, your wife, me, your parents, and we were just all enjoying a great dinner. Well, most of us were enjoying it. You were sitting there on a phone watching highlights with headphones in and texting God knows who. <laughs> like, how do you how do you have the ability to do all that and ignore your friends and your family all at once? You must really hate your life. Like, I can't imagine <laughs> being so good at that type of multitasking. But D'Angelo, you know, let's continue on your praises. You have given so many people opportunities in their life. It is amazing. Like, for example, you give poor little teenagers the opportunity to get your shopping cart from God knows where because you're too lazy to take it back. <laughs> you give pregnant moms and handicapped people the opportunity to walk three miles into the store <laughs> <laughs> because you're too lazy and you steal their spots. <laughs> you give your friends the opportunity to defend you every time you go on national TV and make a jackass of yourself. <laughs> no, guys, I swear he's not this bad in person. <laughs> you give the neighborhood kids the opportunity to pick on poor little DJ for having a peak bicycle because you're too cheap to go buy him a new one. D'Angelo, 
And last but not least, you gave everyone on The Amazing Race the opportunity to do your task for you. But listen, D'Angelo, I know that you love to play the villain role, so I'm not going to give you too much flack for that. But speaking of role playing, I remember when Gary and I were talking about Fifty Shades of Gary and we spoke with Reese uh, about about you guys. And we were like, Reese, does D'Angelo love to role play in the bedroom? She said, honestly, guys, the only role playing that D'Angelo likes to do is he likes to play the running back. And I was like, me and Gary looked at him like, what are you talking about? She goes, yeah, all I ever get out of him are short and quick spurts up the middle. And if I'm lucky, I might get a five and out. Not to mention, every time he's about to get me into the end zone, he fumbles it away. <laughs> Damn it, D'Angelo. <laughs> You're a smart man for sticking to what you know, and I can't fault you for that. So that's my last phrase for you, D. You are a smart, smart man. And with that, I'm going to pass the mic back over to Gary. <laughs> so that was an amazing, amazing job right there telling the good things about D'Angelo. Uh, so we've talked about this multiple times before on the podcast, and I just got to reiterate the story. So D'Angelo always calls his kids pandas, and there's a, so pandas are from Asia. They're black. They're white, right? So it's funny. So he always talks about, oh, my kids are pandas. My kids are pandas. He's got a tattoo of pandas on his leg. And every, he's black. His wife's Asian. So where does the white come from? Well, I'm going to clue everybody in where the white comes from. So two of his kids, maybe three, it's still debatable. His wife just happened to get pregnant when I was happened to be there as well. And if you need, if you need more proof of that, his son, <laughs> little GJ, little Gary Jr., is already taller than D'Angelo is, and he's only five years old. Like, imagine that. Like, he's already taller than D'Angelo. You can't tell me that's D'Angelo's kid. So, I'm just <laughs> saying there has to be something. We might need to do a test one of these days because he did not like my one and a half percent test. So, we might have to do a test just to give out the proof. Because I know mom and dad, <laughs> and now they know. They know the truth. So we're hoping D will finally come to the truth. And D, you know, you remember that time when we were on the Amazing Race and I told you, do not embarrass me. That was the only thing I asked, just do not embarrass me. And as time alluded to, you went on and embarrassed the shit out of me. You went on there talking about how rich you are, how you can buy the show, you can do anything you want to do, you don't need this. And then basically we walked back to the hotel room and you said, I'm not your partner anymore. You know, those are great times. Like it was a lot of fun traveling with you. Uh, and this is going to be part of the theme because as our guests come in, I'm going to come back with more stories that I'm going to bring up about our travels and things that might make you remember the good times we had, D. Because I'll give you another one, because our guest should be coming on here in a minute. You remember the time where we were at the Pro Bowl uh, in Hawaii? Well, hold on. Sorry. Let me correct. I was at the Pro Bowl. You were there just watching. I'm sorry. I was wondering oh, if you were correct. Oh, shit. <laughs> you were there. I think you were probably filming some hair commercial or something. So you were just there taking it all in while I was actually playing. So there, no here nor there. Well, But – it's time alluded to that. That's probably because of the fumbling issue. You had that way back in the day, the first time we ever played each other in college. You just happened to – literally, you go for a game-winning touchdown and you hand the ball to my safety. You literally took it out of your hands and handed it to him, and then we end up winning the game. No, there's no talking, sir. You get to the very end. You're muted. So – D, I hope you sit back. I hope you enjoy this. You know, this is all in good love. So it is a birthday present, and it is not just my doing. This was also an idea from Reese. Oh, hey, we happen to get our first guest. Our first oh. guest is on. Who do, who do we have on today to roast D'Angelo? He is muted. He cannot talk to you. Oh, D, happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> happy birthday, bro. I can't, I can't. I was waiting for this moment for a long, long time. Thank you to your wife. She's an amazing lady. Thanks to Gary, another amazing friend. So, uh, Gary, we want to start? Yo, go ahead. You're up. You got the floor. Hey, hey I'm just going to tell you, D'Angelo is as white as Michael Jackson. The only difference is Michael Jackson tried to go black again. 
<laughs> I just saying, man. I just like Jeff Ross said too. <laughs> D'Angelo is the best looking out of all three Williams sisters. <laughs> if, if if I'm not mistaken, that was one of them, right? How old are you, D? What is he like? Thirty. He's not allowed now? to talk. I think he's forty six. No. Forty six. Yeah, I man. think he's getting old. You know he's got to go. You know he's got to go to the doctor all the time now. So. Wow. Yeah. Hey, how are those depends treating you? The ones that Reese got you last night. Are they good? Are they fitting? <laughs> man, I don't like it. Though. Wow. You can't <laughs> hey, man. No obscene gestures none of that it's uncalled for bro it's it's out of love for you but i just want your fans to understand how jewish you are because you're cheap very cheap <laughs> <laughs> very cheap you can't you can't talk you ain't wrong so, I, I know right i mean he cheap he's he's borderline jewish oh we got another fan oh we that's that another is. that's our other roaster we have two roasters on at the same time I'm, I'm gonna say well, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell the fans why D'Angelo doesn't drink. Uh, so back in his uh, freshman year in college, D'Angelo tried to be a macho man and go shot for shot with some people like me, and he ended up in a fetal position at somebody's house in the bathtub, <laughs> and that's why he doesn't drink anymore. You know, here I thought it was always a moral high ground about why he didn't drink, and it was really because he bitched out after getting taken to the house one time. <laughs> yep, basically, it, that's that's typical D, though. That's typical D. <laughs> exactly. Is, hey, he wants to be in that white society so bad that he's dogging his own people sometimes. <laughs> but Tom, I'm gonna let you take over, Tom. I'm, I'm gonna listen to this because it's gonna be a fun. Tom, one. you got it. You have the floor, Tom. All right, how's it going out there, everybody? So D'Angelo is um, muted. He cannot talk to you, so he will not be able to respond. It will be just you talking, and we'll, you'll hear us laughing and responding too. Man, if if you could get a button like that for Reese, she would love that, wouldn't she? <laughs> you telling me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, I like a, it. We know you can't really write or read. But, uh, oh shit! <laughs> it's that so Memphis guys, education, man. It's that Memphis education. So, uh, so yeah. So I ride bikes with D, and uh, you know, growing up, I was a big football fan, and I loved to play football, uh, watch football, and uh, so I always thought it'd be really cool. To really, you know, meet an NFL player and hang out with one. And then a couple of years ago, here comes D showing up to ride with us. And damn, by the end of that ride, I was wishing I was an NBA uh, fan because <laughs> <laughs> it is horrible. The whole reason that uh, D even wound up out there is Reese. Reese convinced him that he needed to ride with a group. You know, he had an event coming up and, uh, so she found this group and brought him out there. I think we were like the third or fourth one. Nobody else would take him. But uh, so he shows up out there. And uh, the real reason was Reese needed a break. I'm like, what kind of man do you got to be to have three small kids at home and your wife is getting you out of the house so she can have a break? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Before we left, Reese stopped me and she whispered in my ear. She says, two hours. She says, you got to keep them gone for two hours. If you're back in less than two hours, you got hell to pay. And you guys know Reese. I was scared. I was scared. <laughs> so luckily, luckily, D had no idea where he was. And he talked so damn much. He didn't realize we went by the same house 37 times because I was not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> in less than two hours. That, was not that is funny. Then, that sounds uh, about right. <laughs> and then you know, uh -oh. uh, he he is a talker. You know how uh, he just he'll never shut up. Um, sometimes I think I'm just listening to the uh, to the cinnamon show when you guys are on. He just kind of jacks the, the show up. Yeah. <laughs> right, you know, and then he gets on to his Facebook Live and just never stops talking so much that people are tired of listening. Yeah. So now the man's so desperate, he convinces his in-laws to move in with them, just so he can uh, 
he can get his father-in-law on the darn show. Everyone wants to listen to him instead. So convince him, come in. What kind of man does that to their father-in-law, D? God. Wow. That is low. <laughs> Tom, that yeah. goes to my point. He's trying to blend in with the white community so bad. Dude. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's funny. When we had our political, we had our political podcast, he had his, his Make America Great Again hat on, but he took it off for fear of everybody being mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is a true statement. <laughs> I don't know if this is a is a uh, this is where he really kind of gets kicked out of the white community because we're okay with this, but you know, D, when we go out riding right before a ride, if he sees the forecast and there's like a chance, just a chance of a couple drops of rain, he's not going to go because he's afraid to get his socks wet. <laughs> I mean, I thought you had to find guys more tougher than that, afraid of the damn socks wet. So last week, now this this is this is true here. Last week, there was a there was a chance of a breeze, so D doesn't ride with us. You know, he cancels because there might be a little bit of a breeze. And so my wife says, "Is D riding with you guys tonight?" I said, "No, I don't know what his sissy excuse is today." He she says, "Well, just let him know I got some tampons if he needs them." No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, where where was your wife? Wow! Angelo played against the Tennessee Volunteers, man. He he would have needed a whole batch of them. <laughs> oh, I see Bell Bell joined Gary. Yeah, Bell joined. I see Bell oh, on here. Goes. Is it okay for me to talk? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. D'Angelo is completely muted. He cannot respond at all until the very end, so he can't say a word. All he can do is hear you. Oh, man, I need this access 24-7 when I'm talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, very, very, you know you really care about somebody. You're out trying to, you know, get your day. You spend your Sunday doing stuff, but you got to block it off for some slap dude like you. And you can't say nothing back. This is awesome, man. Don't hang up. He usually hang up the phone when I get to talking about him. So I got him now with his hands tied. Okay. I like this action. I really do. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? You know, doing good. Having fun uh, a little happy, jabbing at him. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday to the man, the whitest black guy I know. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, oh, man. Oh, Lord. That's a... Okay. That's a theme today. That's a theme yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a truth out, though. I love you anyway, though, but I just, you know, I don't understand how, how it all happens like that. You get to pick and choose, you know, what day, I guess, according to the day, if you're going to be, I'm going to roll with my brothers, meaning blacks, or I'm going to slide over here to my true friends, the whites. I don't know which way we're going to go. <laughs> Never know what will going hey, to Bell, Bell. Yeah. Bell, let me stop you real quick before we get going on this. You know, I, I heard a story about why D'Angelo actually started hanging out with white people. Apparently, the first time he went to a locker room, he started looking around during the shower time, and he realized he fit in a certain place more than he did the other. That's why he started hanging out with the white guys. Oh, man. I, I, think that's, I disagree with that statement. I think that's why he went to Asian. I think that's why he went to Asian. <laughs> Gary said he disagree. I disagree oh, with that man. statement. Whole <laughs> part of the man said, well, I'm find my community according to my size. I hear you. I hear you, man. <laughs> Looking for your community. It's kind of like I say when he, I guess I hadn't been to jail, but they say you go to jail, you have to sync up with your folks so you can, you know, have a little little protection and everything. You want to fit in where you wouldn't <laughs> where you wouldn't get uh, ragged on so much. It makes sense. <laughs> now, I didn't, now, I didn't. You learn something new every day. I did not know that. I'm about to talk to my sister about that and try to figure out <laughs> where you really do, where you really fit in and accord. <laughs> Bill, I think the <laughs> listeners want to know why D'Angelo did not play in that Tennessee game, man. Like, yeah, I think we need the breakdown for that, please. Yeah. All right, all right, man. Well, I really, it's really a touch of something. I don't usually speak on it, but me being me, I gotta be honest. With well, really, uh, that's all I know how to do is tell the truth, man. Uh, well, I'll say this, man. It's it's Memphis. For anyone that don't know, that's if you go play at Memphis, 
I think if you played at UT, you probably feel this way. The one, the one school, no matter what, that you just don't rock with or vibe with, and a hundred percent is 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 UT. Uh, you know, you get an opportunity to play them. They won't even play us anymore. But when it was back in the day, when they was playing us in the nineties, early two thousand, the great D'Angelo Williams. Rush, man, I'm had them up for the Heisman, the rush for all these yards, they had mm-hmm. opportunity to go out and make a statement to the world. You know, this ain't no fluke coming for USA. You know, people saying, man, oh, they ain't playing nobody. And uh, UT game on the schedule. I think that was the mistake. Coach West probably didn't know it. And they, they actually showed him the schedule. I think probably at <laughs> the beginning of the season, he knew. Uh, I'm going to be hurt on this day because I don't want no pause of that. Now, the truth is, he said he was he had an injury. I think he was just hurting a little bit. But we call it the phantom, phantom like a phantom injury. Because to this day, I don't know what was really wrong with him. Nobody knows. I have been told I could have played, you know, maybe. But, you know, I, I just didn't play. So... <laughs> We pretty much figured out what it really was, what the man was afraid to go up against that SEC rival. That's the only thing we can come up with. The no. man was 100% <laughs> afraid to play against UT. And think we are thankful in Tiger Nation that the great Joe Doss Amen. went out there and had a hell of a game. That kid, Not knocking Amen. Joe Doss' game. Not knocking because he clearly he tough. Tougher than one person here, I know. Uh, clearly a tough guy, but just imagine with the success that D'Angelo had, if we could have just got him to get out there and, and give him what he had, man, we would have beat him again. I, I'm a feeling my soul, but the man was too afraid. And I thought after giving him crap about that, he would never do it again. And a lot of y'all may not know, man, when he was in the lead and seen Baltimore Ravens and Ravens oh, was on the schedule. The man wouldn't play them games either. I was just saying, y'all go back and look at it. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me how many times he played against the great Ray Lewis, but I'm going to say the man was afraid all over again. Another fan of his injury. So I don't know if it's the middle linebackers or just, you know, some of that stuff you don't want. That's that's good insight because I don't think a lot of people knew how scared D was to play Tennessee and to play the Ravens because I played against Ray Lewis. I got to play one game. I had no problem with it. I had no problem hey, with it whatsoever, so I, I don't understand I, that either. But man, I'm just telling you, man, it could it didn't add up when you look when you take your time to look around and say, Damn, he showed up and didn't play against that. And I, I hadn't seen him afraid, but that's that was my brother, man. He if he's scared, he, he find a way out of it. And then I, I remember Romeo, you was with me, man. We was in Atlanta and I watched my brother make a hell of a play on like a screen, man, with like Took the screen probably like 85 yards. I'm a damn near about to scope and got caught and fumbled the ball with 10 feet in the air. Gonna roll around like he hurt. He ain't hurt. He just damn fumbled the ball, man. Stop all this shit. I've been sick of it, dog. I ain't even told you for a while now. When you're wrong or you mess up, man, own up to it. But that's your white shit. That's what you do. That's how you act. Whoa, you hey, do. hey, hey, hey. Calm yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you black though. You're True, black. I am. I you you do always you say I am blacker yeah, than the answer. Give me the that percent. No, one hundred percent, and I mean that to the core. I know uh, that's what I'm saying. That's the type of guy he got, man. He is. Uh, last, I don't have a lot. Man, I can tell a story for days, but I'm just so proud of him from you know growing up and being able to do stuff on his own for a while. <laughs> I was worried about him. Guy showed up for Super Bowl one year, and, you know. I had to tell him, like, you know, bro, you know you get paid every week. You can go to the store and buy you some draws. Here. What am I supposed to do if I ain't got no draws? Like, go to the store and buy some. Like, I was like, this kid ain't going to make it. But you you, you came full circle for me. And then learn how to shop for yourself a little bit. Now, he got uh, all the money in the world. Now, you, he won't buy, you know, I don't even want to talk about it. If you know him, you know what I'm talking about. The guy ain't going to spend a dime on let me let me cheap. let me tell you guys this whenever the very first time i won the wrestlemania trip to go hang out with the, these guys we went to a salvation army to pick out my outfit to wear <laughs> to wrestlemania not only that 
D'Angelo was haggling with the person that do we really gotta pay a dollar for this shirt? It looks more, it looks like it's worth about fifty cents. And, and he was trying to haggle the Salvation Army on their prices. Hey, that, and, and it was crazy. The people probably think, oh, we just joke. That's him for real. Like it, like it took us. It took Romeo and I years to even get him to 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 do to what tip. was significant and tip. tip. That. And and he's all, oh, man. Why do I have to pay for my meal and do that? But I I, I don't even know what's about it. I don't think he. Really, in his mind, was just trying to be a bad person, asshole. He just thought paying his bill was suffice that he had a two thousand dollar tab. Why I got a tip? Uh, because that's what the hell you're supposed to do, bro. Uh, you know, twenty percent would be what needs to be done. But trying to get him to play twenty percent be like oh, trying to get him to play in the UT game. Some shit just oh. ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so it's funny yeah. you brought that up because uh, time brought up the fact that. Uh, he only he only let his son ride the pink bicycle because he wouldn't buy him a new one for his son. He made Gary, a down bicycle. Gary, you you know how hot I was. And man. Hot Wheels too. You, you do you do know how upset I was yes. about that. And he wanted to give me this crap about oh man, this is color. He has a different reason for him. But all it was about at the end of the day when he was too cheap and didn't want to go out and buy a yes, damn that's power correct. wheel for my damn nephew and got him riding around in the pink. Uh, a power wheel and playing with the girls hand me down toys. No, it, it's the saddest thing on earth. But hey, if you get you know a new um um what's the damn things he like the the hunt paintball gun? Oh, it's been five thousand dollars on one of them. Or Halloween <laughs> or Halloween like, costume. Or yeah, a Halloween costume. He'll spend twenty grand. But he hey, but he ain't gonna go out and buy my nephew a damn. Three four hundred dollar power wheel. Some shit just gotta <laughs> stop, man. Gotta so so stop. he could bought it. He could bought his daughter a used bike from me. Wow! <laughs> Ooh, call out! <laughs> wow! Wow, man! A used bike? Yeah, with one pedal. Yeah, man. He wanted to cut. He wanted to cut. Wow! You know what he is? Wow! He'll work on it like all oh, year. It's gonna man, cost two extra dollars this. for the other pedal. Man, <laughs> hey, when y'all get a chance, ask him about ask him about the fan that he bought from I think Home Depot or Lowe's. Oh Reese man, wanted a fan. Oh. Yeah, he was trying to prove a point. Another asshole <laughs> moment, trying to prove a point and backfired on him. He thought it was like, yeah, I'm gonna show her. He end up and what he had to do, drag his yeah. ass back to the store <laughs> to get the right thing. Like, you gonna learn, <laughs> man, to listen sometimes. Don't so I listen, see, man. I see we have another person that joined. It looks like the table has joined. The table. So I am very the interested table. to hear from the table. What does the is table the, got for us? Is this the table with the Uno match when he got beat up? It no, is no, 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 no. Oh, it's a different table. table. Wrestling. The wrestling oh, table. Oh, the table. <laughs> that table. <laughs> they kicked his ass. What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, nice to see you, table. How you feeling today? <laughs> Listen to all these UT stories, Baltimore Raven stories. When he retired, he got brave. He came after me, but he missed by like five feet. Almost broke his neck. He tried, though. You got to give him the credit. You have to give him the credit. He went for it. Ooh. Right. Table, I got to know, has he tried to reach out to you for a rematch? Or do you think he's too scared? Or Because everybody saw it. I mean, the views are so high on YouTube now. Everybody's seen that. That moment of failure where you just completely whooped his ass. Like, has he reached out for a rematch? I appreciate, I appreciate him almost breaking his neck. It brought me fame and fortune. Fame and fortune. <laughs> I, it's, I, I mean, my, my Tinder is just full, nonstop. We got picnic tables that are coming after me. We got <laughs> dining room tables. We got Italian marble tables that want me. Nobody wanted me prior to this. I, I appreciate everything he did for me. Everything. Oh, I mean, he did eventually come out and break me, but thankfully, as I mentioned in the first call, I mean, it's been a few years since I've talked with you guys. So, you know, thankfully, some redneck in Orlando put me back together with some some duct tape and glue <laughs> that just gave me a new life. Oh, no, we, we love that you're on here to share these stories. Like, did he, did, did y'all talk through the match beforehand? Like, did it go, like, what, what was the pre, pre preparing for that? Because it didn't look like it, 
Like, it looked like you were fed up with the way he was treating you throughout the whole time. And you're like, I ain't dealing with him this time. He's got to live on his own. And you just said, screw it. And you did your own thing. That's what it looked like. So I don't know what what happened before that. Drama go, well, look, I'm not, I don't think I'm releasing any secrets. Wrestling isn't real, right? <laughs> so we were, you know, we had to practice this or, or choreography, if you want to call it this. And he was just giving me so much crap. I, I was almost going to cuss, but. Uh, he was just giving me so much crap all week, and all I had to do, it, it, I just scooted a little closer to the ropes as he was jumping off, and he, uh, it, it still to this day will crack me up when I see it. Uh, yeah, because it definitely cracked his whole body. Because I know I got in the ring with him, and when I got in there, he couldn't even stand. I had to literally pick <laughs> him up, and I was like, "You got to stand up. This table can't beat you." Because the other guys weren't beating you, but the table did beat him. It was pretty bad, and I had to like carry him back to the back, and then he almost crying like a little baby in the back because he messed up. It was pretty bad. I mean, was- leading up, leading up to the match, I got in with the ring. I, had, I took the ring aside and had a little conversation. I was like, "Don't give." when he hits because just you know give back a little bit so his neck breaks but <laughs> it, it was, it was one of the it was one of the best juke moves the table ever put correct on D'Angelo. <laughs> i really think d'angelo just doesn't know what he's doing i think that's pretty obvious if you watch the match the match eh, he, he was all right he had to be carried by the other guys you know he tried to do his thing he did a little kick up whatever I can do that, and I'm six six. Come on! I'm just glad. I'm just glad that Bad Bunny came on to WrestleMania and showed D'Angelo what a real guest performance is supposed to look like. <laughs> Gary, where, where did you go He's to n- school, Gary? What university did you go? You to? You know, school? so I went to the University of Louisville, and we talked about this a little earlier. How he basically gave away the game to Louisville. You know, I, we talked about this because he loved to fumble. That's his in time even mentioned. He fumbles all the time, so he fumbled away wrestling too, as you see. He did, fumbled did, away that opportunity in wrestling. He could have. It could have been something big. When during that fumble, did the ball hit the ground at all? No, he literally took it out and literally handed it to the safe. He's like, "I don't want to win this game." <laughs> so, but that's because D'Angelo is such a giving person. Like I mentioned yeah, earlier, it is true. He, <laughs> he loves to give back and help. It doesn't matter if it's the other team, if it's the t- if it's the table. He just does. He wants to do everything he can to give back and make himself look better. And speaking of, speaking of uh, opportunities, I know I spoke about a bunch of D'Angelo's opportunities he'd given to others. I want Tom to give us some insight on the opportunity that D'Angelo gave the person riding the bike behind him to crash and like you know. Right. <laughs> we would love We're, to hear the crash the crash breakdown. Where where he threw his bike at the guy? No, basically, yeah, basically where he like yeah. he says a dog came out and clipped him. I didn't see it in the video. He face planted <laughs> and tripped somebody else. That yeah, was a pretty good video. Yeah, I I was luckily I was I was riding behind and I mean there was nothing going on and all of a sudden and these if you ever watch Steve ride, I mean he's all over the damn place anyway. I mean. It, he rides like he like he talks, you know. He's here, he's there, he's kind of going all over, and all of a sudden, if he had an athletic bone in his body, he probably could have saved the wreck. But he started going crazy, and he he's zigzagging, flips over, throws his bike at one guy, and then something takes out an old man coming up behind them. Poor <laughs> old guy, he's still probably limping around out there. Yeah, if he if if he had any athleticism. He could so, have saved that and saved us all some trouble. So I'm Got hearing off the ride. I'm hearing a very good, a bi- very big theme. Let's see, he fumbles in college, f- gives away to the other team in the NFL, fumbles his opportunity at wrestling. He's trying to get into biking. He's fumbling biking. I, D, we got, we might have to have an intervention because you know I only fumbled three times in my whole career college pro everything so i know you're a running back you do hold the ball a little more but you're supposed to be better at holding the ball obviously not we know you don't catch the ball we'll say one thing one one, well if you go look at his stats he he has more drops than he has catches so it's it's interesting that's how good his hands are (laughs) but i will say d'angelo always talks about how fast he is i don't i never saw it I, i and i we talked about this when we were talking about julius peppers all i know is i saw 
a 305 pound defensive end from the left side of the field, run to the quarterback and then chase D'Angelo, who was already 10 yards downfield, and they were both running full speed, and I saw him chasing down. But he swears he runs a 4-4. I'm thinking he runs a 4-8, but he's just it, it, he runs in the middle, so like he says, and he doesn't play the big games, so he only played against the lesser talent when he was in college, so he didn't get to see against a true talent, so he didn't get to actually uh, understand the hey, speed he, also, he thinks his 4 is 4-4 when it's actually 4-8, maybe 5 he also says he's five nine, and we know he. Oh, he's like five one at the most. That's the, that's the thing. You got to give him credit. He has short legs. It's harder to get those things moving. And like you said, Gary, I mean, I don't know was Dem- was Memphis a Division two back when he played, or, or they they were D one. No, no, they were, they were Conference USA. I can't I can't hate oh, okay. it because I was Conference okay. USA my freshman year too. So they had talent, but they did play some suspect teams at that time. And you see, those are the games he went off on. The games that he didn't go off on were the better teams. I don't know what was going on there. I'm just saying. I, I'm just giving the facts. You know, it could have been like a wet day or something. The grass was wet. They didn't get, want to get his socks wet. So, yeah, you know, I can't play Tennessee because I'll get my socks wet. True. That's probably how he is. Oh, we got another roaster on. Can't wait for this one. You're welcome to go ahead and go. You can start anytime. Well, You've already I, go. I can't. I can't. I can't wait. I got away from my partner in crime, D-Lo. Okay. You think it would just be me jumping on this one, so Dylan. Please with, tell the people who you are. So yeah. I, 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 I'm Billy Ward. I, I have the luxury of training D'Angelo with Dylan, who will be uh, jumping on here shortly. Um, we had the opportunity to train D'Angelo. Almost every day at Performance Unlimited. So. Yeah, I was going to say, training's a loose term because I know he doesn't go very often. He says he goes all the time, but Reese always rats him out. He might go once a month. So I just, it's loosely training. Well, there's a, there's a couple things that have to be understood, right? And, and the first piece is if, if Reese is not coming, either is D'Angelo. So, so yes, it's, it's, it's not really training. It's let me just show up to the gym first and foremost. Um, and I would say the second piece is I would love, and I wish I had shot in a video of his actual training at performance Unlimited Cause I, I think you're right. I think training is a very loose term <laughs> in what is actually happening, uh, within his time there. But, uh, you know, I guess we'll leave that up for interpretation for everyone. Cause we got no true evidence of that. True. True. I have actually been to Performance Unlimited. I've seen some of the training. It does work. Obviously, it doesn't work for D'Angelo because he doesn't go very often. And again, like you said, Reese controls all that. So if Reese goes, he goes. He's not doing it on his own. His his next thing is he's gonna go. He's gonna go training to bike when he doesn't go to that half the time if it's windy, rainy. So he's not even risking it. So he says he's doing all this thing, but to me, it just sounds like what time said he's just sitting at home playing on his phone with his headphones on and doing nothing. That's what it well, sounds like to me. Well, there, there's a, a couple consistent things that seem to happen throughout the week with D'Angelo. One is he always seems to be having a 60-mile bike ride on that particular day. I'm like, D'Angelo, that's your, that's your ninth one in five days? How did that work out? And then the second piece of that is I, I don't know how it works, but he always seems to disappear for 15 to 20 minutes at the start of his workout and claims that there's no toilet paper in the bathroom. So, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how this stuff works out, but his hour-long workout seems to turn into a 40-minute workout uh, pretty regularly, I would say. Well, it looks like your other partner in crime, Dylan, has joined. So I'm, y'all have the floor. Y'all feel free to do what you want. Talk to D. He is muted. He cannot talk to y'all right now. <laughs> Love it. Well, hey, we, we, we figured the best way to do this would be for us to show how we experience experience D'Angelo on a regular basis at Performance Unlimited. So for everyone's sake, I I am going to be the fine, intelligent, good-looking coaches and staff members at Performance Unlimited that are so considerate of all the clients that are there and and, and truly take everything into consideration of the whole person. And and Dylan is going to be D'Angelo. Okay, perfect. We'll run through a, a couple specific scenarios we so, seem to So this is an exact uh, uh, reenactment of D'Angelo at training. 100%. Perfect. Kick us off, Dale. Oh. Oh, Billy. Oh. 
Yo, we 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 got it. We got a good one today, bro. So what what what's 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 going on, D'Angelo? I mean, we we we, we got it. All right, all right, all right. If a chicken crosses the road and doesn't get to the other side, did he cross the road? Um. Uh, I. No, I, I wouldn't say he's – no, because you said he didn't get to the I, other I, side. No, 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 no. Think about this. If a chicken crosses the road and doesn't get to the other side, but, he cross the road. But, but you, you, you said he didn't get to the other side. No, so no, no. can't no, no, possibly you, have gotten – you couldn't have you're not, crossed you're not, the road. You're not getting, you're not getting what I'm, you're not getting what I'm saying. But no, right, listen, it doesn't make any sense that you said he didn't get to the other side. It doesn't no, make but, any sense. but did, but he did. <laughs> How? Be- because reasons. But <laughs> you're giving me a very black and white question, and now you're saying there's great. This doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. It's got to be one or the other. Either he crossed the road or he didn't. Like, how do you not? How do you not get what I'm what, what I'm trying to say to you right now? It, you said he didn't get to the other side, no. saying there's no way he crossed. Dude, the road. what? You're saying he crossed. You're saying he crossed the road. D'Angelo, can you just? Can, are you procrastinating lifting weights? Like I, I don't. I, 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 I don't understand why you're like. Just, just can you can you lift, please? That's crazy to me, bro. That's crazy to me. <laughs> but can I'm done with you, Billy. <laughs> Um, all right. Ah, so hey. me and the wife are in a disagreement. <laughs> on, on the chicken crossing she the road? Said, she said that the chicken didn't get to the other side because it crossed the road. It, it, oh. Do you see what I'm saying? No, no. But, I, do, you like, but do you see what I'm I saying, don't. though? Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. What? That's crazy to me, dude. Well, well, hey, listen, we, we, got, we got 10 squats we're going to hit today. I want you to grab – we're going to go ahead. We're going to grab that 80-pound weight. We'll start with 10 squats. Um, oh. Why don't we start from there? Oh. Oh, so this is your mission today. Well, well I mean – Whose mission is it, Billy? You, you are paying – My mission would have me at home sleep. But you're, you're, paying, <laughs> you're paying me to coach you, paying me to coach you, and, and I want to do 10, 10 squats today because that's what – I'm telling you to do. Well, for the record, I don't pay you nothing. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do – I mean, I'm just – Pick up the weight I mean, and do 10 squats. But the paper says eight. But, D'Angelo, can you hit – can you pick up the weight and hit 10 squats for me so we can move forward? Because I don't have two hours to debate whether the chicken crossed the road and whether you're going to actually lift the weight in, in, in front but of I, me. I, I got a 967 mile bike ride later today, bro. <laughs> my quads, my VMOs. Do you see my VMOs, dude? It hurt like right there. Yeah, you've been. This and is we got to keep a 48.67 mile per hour pace, bro. It's not pos- That's not possible. I, I watched all these old dudes down in Waxhaw do it. <sighs> um, <laughs> well, listen. Listen, listen, listen. I don't know how you feel right now, D'Angelo. Yeah, D'Lo, I don't know how you feel, but you, but look you good, damn bro. sure look good, bro. <laughs> you damn sure look good, man. Happy birthday. Before the, the, the trainers leave, I have to ask, so does D'Angelo ever do any uh, HIT training? Yeah, the, it was the H-I-I-T. What's that stand for oh, again? Oh, 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 oh. The High Intensity Interval Training? Okay, so he's just putting too much emphasis on the high part, and he's not getting enough training done. That's where all these questions come from. Okay, I got it. I got it. I was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The re- the rest interval is like the whole workout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll say this: we, we we so we have a we have what we call the D'Angelo rule, and and D'Angelo actually doesn't know this, but the the D'Angelo rule is this: if you got to stop them talking. You just put, a, you put them on a timer and you say, listen, you only have a certain amount of time to get this done or you have one of your 517-mile bike rides from PU right now. So we tell every new trainer, don't want D'Angelo to talk, just put them on a timer. You'll get them done real quick. 
so I'd be remiss. I was heard to ask about the falling asleep on the stair climber machine story. Oh, uh, I was heard. To, I was. Oh. I was told. I was told to ask oh, about this. Man, so D'Angelo obviously retires from from the NFL and and comes to Formance Unlimited and starts training. And and Jeremy, one of his longtime coaches, you know, was telling us, giving us the, the rundown. So it's one of D'Angelo's first classes he ever participated in at Performance Unlimited. And we were doing three-minute intervals. And he decides, you know, I'm going to jump on the stair climber for this. I'm like, really? Like, no one ever picks the stair climber for a three-minute interval. But okay. So one of the things you got to learn is, you know, D'Angelo will go wherever the goal is. So you've got to set the bar high, and, and he'll usually hit that. So I put him on an 18 on the stair climber, which, I mean, for reference, very little people can continue with an 18 on the stair climber for three minutes. So he's rolling. We're about a minute, minute and a half through, and all of a sudden I hear, <gasps> step in, <gasps> step in. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's not going to make it for three minutes. We hit the two-minute interval, and now it's quicker. Oh, step it up. Oh, then the, the stair climber, his legs start hanging off, and he's holding onto the bars, and the stair climber's just hitting his dangling legs, and he will not let go. So I, I, I say, D'Angelo, just hit. Tell it to stop. Tell it to stop. And he's like, oh, oh. And his legs are just getting crushed by this revolving stair climber for, for a minute, for a minute at a time, just sitting this. <laughs> and he comes off that thing. I, I finally run over and hit stop. And he goes, bro, that stair climber was tough, man. I'm like, dude, you were just hanging off of it for a minute. Do you think? <laughs> so we uh, safe to say D'Angelo hasn't picked the stair climber since. So, so just like the table, it beat him as well. Because the table, who we also had on, the table beat him. So he has a, he has a knack for like getting <clears throat> dominated by things. It's a, it's impressive. It's impressive. Hey, on, on that note, we had to stop putting his program on the table because he'd never be able to. He would just always miss it. So we have to put his program on the floor. Of the I mean, cabinet. that's that, that that just that's true to him. True to him. I, and for y'all that don't know, their depiction of D'Angelo is basically what he is every time on the podcast. I know y'all hear it. He literally, if you don't understand what he's saying, he doesn't understand why. Like it, because he doesn't make sense. He just runs around <laughs> right. never get to the point. And my my prime example was if you've seen Jumanji two, he is Kevin Hart's character in oh. Jumanji two. He takes twenty minutes just to get to the point. It, it every time that is what D'Angelo is, and that's a fact. And he might have a point. He might not by the time he gets there. But and he's you, just you know, talking. You know it's real when that one hand's on the chest and the other hand is like reaching out to you, and he's like <laughs> trying. He's trying to get you to understand what he's saying. He's That's like when I know it's will real. it into you. He's trying to will it from him to you through his hand. Well, I know we have one more person coming on before Reese gets to close us out, and I'm waiting for that person to come on time. So I'm going to tell you another story we have of Dia that I've got. So. Uh, you know, we had AFWB. He goes on trips with us quite a bit. Uh, so that's my nonprofit. We go overseas, do football camps. Well, you know, D'Angelo had a, had a job of one time. He's supposed to drive. He chose the job of driving. And this it, it hits home recently because he just drove all of Wyoming, North, North Dakota, all this stuff with the family trip. Well, he chose – he wanted to drive when we were in AFWB. Well, after he drives one hour and he realizes, oh, we're going to drive more times, he's like, I'm not driving anymore. I'm like, D, what are you talking about? You're not driving anymore. You said you wanted to drive. That was your job. I don't want to drive anymore. Why don't y'all drive? I'm like, well, we all have something that we're doing. Like, we all agreed to this. You agreed to it before, too. And come to find out, he's like, I'm overdriving, and I'm just going to get book a flight and go home. And he did because <laughs> he didn't want to drive anymore. <laughs> But he just what? drove eight hours with the family. But when he chose to drive, he decided, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm over it. I'm leaving. I'm going to make y'all drive. And that's what he did. I was like, are you kidding me, D? But, you know, he, he, I think he was just being nice because he was giving us the opportunity to drive and see. He didn't want to take all that for himself. Right. I think that's, that's part right. of the fact that D does. He does a lot of giving back in that way. It's just roundabout ways. 
It says, I play, D'Angelo's the kid when you're in high school to, and you're doing a group project and they pick out what they think is going to be the easiest part of the project to do. And then once they figure out, oh, damn, this is actually the hardest part. They're like, abort, give it, take it back. So I think that's what happened to D'Angelo. He realized that driving won't go because he probably thought, you know, I do driving all the time. Driving is going to be easy. And then once he realized that that won't going to be the funnest part of the trip, he's like, all right, Gary, you take it back. I'm done. That was definitely, definitely what he did. And, uh, but that, that's just typical D'Angelo. You know, I'm used to it. He is. That's why the whole name of the podcast is Cinnamon and Sugar. Cinnamon's very hard to deal with in large quantities. And that's why D'Angelo's hard to deal with for large amounts of time. As you know, Reese always trying to get him out of the house, get him away, get him to do things so she can have some alone time with just the kids. And most people are trying to get away from the kids. Well, she's never. She's trying to get away from the hubby. So it's very interesting. Oh, we have another one. We have another one. Be fun. You got to uh, unmute yourself so we can hear you. Well, you told me to mute myself. No, there, you're Gary. good to go now. Let's go. You got. You have the floor. What? Oh, I, I think I came to the wrong call. I, y'all said this was going to be for uh, my favorite Panthers running back of all time, John Stewart. Oh, yeah. Well, we couldn't uh, get him. He would, he would cost too much. Uh, okay, so it's for the – Oh well, happy birthday there, Fumble. I mean, uh, D'Angelo. How you doing, buddy? He is completely muted, cannot talk to you, so uh, you have the floor. Oh, so we actually all get a chance to talk about him and he not talk back? Correct. This, this is awesome. Uh, what can I say about my friend? Let's see here. Uh, he's cheap, cheap as hell. I ain't never met anybody that wants to sit there and argue about like a dollar fifty taco. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then if you take some free tacos to him and have a bid, you leave him over there. And uh, they grab the box and they fall out. It's your fault. You know what I'm saying? I've never met anybody that gets mad about free tacos before. <laughs> so uh, that's that's that guy there. Uh, let's see. What else can we talk about? What have y'all talked about already? Any and everything. Feel free to just talk about any. If you want to rehash things, plenty of people have done it because that is D'Angelo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting here trying to think, man, because, uh, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about our friendship. So. When I first started, when I first met him, it was from riding bikes, right? We all know he's a cyclist. He's, well, he's, he's, a, okay. oh, he's a cyclist in air quotes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's okay as a cyclist. But um, but he's anyway, so we're, we're riding. Well, let, well, let, me, let me go to the front. D'Angelo can't believe fat people can ride bikes, right? He just he just can't believe that. And he, he hated me from the get-go. As soon as he saw me, he's like, yeah, this guy can't do it. And then I smoke him. Like numerous times, and he's like, "Okay, I see you, I see you." So anyway, that's how we hit our friendship off, and um, it's been good though, man. It's been nice hanging out with him. We're about the well, he's older than me, actually. He's an old bastard. Yeah, I think um, he's forty six today. Uh, forty eight, I thought. Oh, it's one of them. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's uh, he's a few months older than me, but he's a good dude. One thing I've learned from D'Angelo, he loves his family. It's all, all the flaws he's got being cheap and everything. The one thing I love about that dude is how much he loves his family and he puts them bef- uh, before everything. So he still sucks at riding, uh, sucks at football, sucks at wrestling. Hey, Gary, Gary, yeah. and I know it's been a theme throughout the podcast that D'Angelo is the whitest black person that uh, all of his friends know. Correct. And I don't think there's anything that points to that more than Be Fun. Be Fun, will you tell everybody uh, what your profession is? Oh, do we gotta hash that out again? <laughs> fight, club. fight club. There you go. If anybody wants to know what fight, the fight club references, go back and listen to previous podcasts. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, thought I, I thought I had qualified immunity on that one. Uh, I guess not. You are. You are. Hey, we're just talking about past podcasts. Yeah, I'm listening though. I will say this: you talk about that. D. I'll never forget. I had one of my other friends show up. And uh, to a ride, and he got so butthurt. He's like, I thought I was the only black person you knew. I said, nah, bro, I got tons of friends like that. And he got real butthurt about that. Well, speaking of friends, he he has such a uh, such a spot for friends where he gets so attached. And for some reason, I don't understand. Like, he gets so mad that one of my friends would call me while he's talking on the phone. And I click over, or my friend shows is at my house while I'm talking to him, and I'm responding to my buddy who's at my house. Oh, you have other friends? Well, yeah. You didn't tell me about them. Yeah. Well, I, why I have to tell you about everybody that I know? And he gets so upset about it. But the thing is, I'm not even his best friend. 
I'm still questionable if I'm a godparent right now. I don't know. And I'm the actual oh. parent of two or three kids, but maybe four. Who knows? Wow. I can't we have to still find that out. So I don't know. I don't understand his whole mindset with that. Yeah. Mm. It, you know, he did bring a friend over to a to the party last year that he never told us about either. <laughs> yeah, the one you that know? can't drive the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wants you to tell all his friends, but he's not going to tell you all about his friends. Yeah. That's right. So that's that's the thing. He he doesn't yeah. want it both ways. Or hey, Tom, remember that time he took us over to uh, his other friend's house, and uh, was it Tony? What oh, that is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, look, these are all my friends, and he's like, wow, you got a lot of white friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. We thank you for coming on. Be fun. You're welcome to listen because we're going to finish it off with none other than Reese. His wife gets to finish the roast off. Reese, you have the RB thirty four wifey. RB thirty four wifey. <laughs> this is who we always get our text messages and our emails from about lies yeah. D'Angelo tells. You have the floor, I Reese. Got, I think it's so fitting that Be Fun also was talking about how much. D'Angelo's family is so important to him and he puts them first, but there's been plenty of times where twice when we actually thought that there were gunshots in the area that we were in and he pushed me and ran the other way. <laughs> so, I don't know who he's putting first. <laughs> I don't know who he's putting first in those. Reese, he put you first in the, in, in the line of danger. <laughs> in the That's line right. of danger. <laughs> see, see, he's still giving back. It's just a different way. <laughs> you know, he gave you the opportunity to be the hero. He gave you the opportunity to be the hero. <laughs> That's exactly the hero role. Yeah. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. I don't have any. I don't have any stories to really tell him about him right now. I'm going to be very easy because I know you guys laid in on him. <laughs> he had no idea. And this is the second time we've set him up, Gary. Yes, it is. <laughs> you think that he would kind of like hint at something. Like we had Raya ready to lie about homework and everything because yep. D'Angelo wanted was to put eating. off the podcast. We were talking, discussing how to get him back to the house. He tried to change the time on us. We weren't letting that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. So, Reese. One thing I want you to do for us is pick one of the times where D'Angelo lied about something on the podcast that you've texted us about and tell our audience about those times. The truth. The truth. One, one of the times, I'm pretty sure, like, there's something on every single podcast. Yes. <laughs> anytime, anytime he starts a story off and says, let me tell you what my wife did. <laughs> it's something that he yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's basically every podcast he starts off with something like that or let me tell you what my wife thinks is usually how he starts it so he's always yep. putting it off on you when it obviously it sounds like it's his thoughts and what he did time one of my favorites was the valentine's candy <laughs> tell everybody about the and y'all's first valentine the whole Valentine episode when D'Angelo was dogging like Valentine's and anybody who celebrates Valentine's and he was like, I don't I don't understand why anybody would do this. It's so commercial, but I don't celebrate Valentine's. And the first year we were together and he buys me flowers and candy and teddy bear. And I'm like, well, what about tomorrow? Reese, like, where do we go tomorrow? Did you see a receipt? Reese, did you see a receipt? Because he don't spend you know, no money. It was it was probably from the gas station. He fun. probably got the flowers from a graveyard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. No, but for real, though, be fun. We were out somewhere one night uh, with some friends, and there was a guy walking around selling flowers, and D'Angelo asked him where he got them, and he said he gets them from the graveyard, and D'Angelo tried to buy some from me. So there well, is that. <laughs> whole story is a lie because, first off, you said you went out with friends. That's a lie because I've been trying to get you and him to come out all weekend, hang out with me and my bride. Uh, and he's like, oh, let me talk to Reese. Or she said no. But yeah, I see you. Yeah. <laughs> no, in college. This is before kids. Oh, college. Okay, okay. Yeah. But 
okay, I got you. I, I let it go. <laughs> so, so the moral of the story basically was D'Angelo says he does not celebrate Valentine's Day, but the reason he does it is because Reese doesn't, but he did until he met Reese. And then he celebrated well, remember and he because changed his thoughts. Remember, D'Angelo came on all high and mighty saying, like, why, why celebrate Valentine's Day? Because I'm going to show my wife love every single day, not just on Valentine's Day. And so Reese is the one who put that idea in his head. I like it. <laughs> Let the truth come out. <laughs> well, I, I think it has came that time we finally unmute D and let him talk. I think we'll give it one. Oh, we'll give you, you I, I got to go, go, Gary. <laughs> uh, you can go. You don't have to listen. You'll get to hear on the podcast. No big deal. He's going to get hit. We'll give him five to ten minutes, and we'll and we'll cut him off. So we'll let him do what he needs to say, give him his re- rebuttals, and we'll go from there. So first off, I, I got to say this has been absolutely amazing, first of all, because I've never been able to get y'all on a, all on a call ever because y'all are usually busy. So it's really interesting that you assholes can all come together to roast me, okay? <laughs> Let's make sure that we point this out. Like, I can't get you fuckers on the phone, but y'all will definitely come together to roast somebody. So that lets me now know wow. that you guys are all out here for destruction. You don't care about building somebody up. So you're more, okay, I, I get it. I see where we're going. Negative so we're gonna start yeah, with- Toxic Tuesday. Yeah, I, I see that. And it ain't even Tuesday. But I, I want to start with you, Gary. And then I'm going to go all the way through because I took notes and I wanted to make sure that I'm able to hit each and every one of you assholes. <laughs> I want to make sure I, I hit y'all and I hit y'all just as hard as y'all hit me. First of all, Gary, you don't even work out. OK, all nope. you do is you're the only person that I know when we go to the store or whatever. Like we all alternate on buying each other's food where well, Gary doesn't look at prices. Gary orders shit to taste. He don't even eat it all. He just ordered it to taste. So if it's sixty dollars and he's just like, oh, I want to taste that, then you just lost sixty dollars because he may not even eat it. He was like, nah, uh-uh. I'm not gonna eat that because it's bad. Like this is how awful of a person Gary is. And I'm like, Gary, what about the kids in third world countries? He was like, shit, they wouldn't eat this either. Uh, yeah, this is Gary. This is this Gary that we talking about. Yeah, when it's bad, this this is the Gary. That we're talking about. He doesn't work out. I've tried to get him on a bike, even on an e-bike. He was like, dude, if I got the pedal, I'm out. You know, the closest I could get him to doing the diathlon is hosting it. He ain't doing no extracurricular activities. I said, Gary, what about if you get fat? He was like, I'm not going to get fat. I'm 6'6". Six, six. I'm 6'7", six, 6'6 six, six and a half. Like, if I put weight on, I can carry it well. Like, nah, we don't want to hear that shit. We want to see you healthy. Now we're going to time. Time, time is one of those guys Tom is a built fat guy, okay? Like, and when I say a built fat guy from the right angle, you'd be like, oh, he ain't fat. But then he turned full circle and you're like, oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. Like, that's Tom. <laughs> that's Tom. Tom, one of those type of people, man, that when he eat, he get tired and he has to like take breaks from eating because he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, look, be fun. Real nervous now because he know he fat fat. All right. So <laughs> we we get into Romeo. Romeo Romeo had lied to me forever. Romeo told me that he played sports at Memphis. He did. He one hundred percent did. He played soccer, and he would tell us all the time that he played soccer and he was a forward and he scored all these goals. Went over to his grandmother's house, and his grand his grandfather was like, yeah, he was the best goalie ever. I said, hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He told me that he was a fool. He was like, nah, he was a goalie. He never he, – he wasn't good enough to play any other position. And I said, Romeo, you just going to lie to me? <laughs> like, our friendship was based off lies, bro. Because you <laughs> told me you, – you even got a picture of you – he cropped the picture out. To where it made it seem like he was a forward, but when you see the whole pitch in his grandparents' house, he was a fucking goalie. He was the goalie. <laughs> he cropped out the goal in the picture and lied to people and said that he was the forward. That's where y'all get y'all information from. Tom, I, I'm so glad that you came on here because I have been wanting to tell you this, and I cracked this joke when we rode the other day, and I'm going to crack this joke now because it's fitting. When I first started riding in the, the bike group, Tom is like the guy that started this group. Tom is like our, he, he, he does the routes. He does all the stuff. He does all the, the, the grinding, right? He gets everything course, makes sure everybody's safe and we're riding and stuff. But Tom has a problem. He has an excessive sweating problem, okay? Tom has a fat soul. 
He just doesn't have a fat body. So he throws off so much sweat. So when you get behind him, you swear that it's right. It sucks. Like, Tom is the worst. <laughs> you will single-handedly get fast because you don't want to be behind him. Oh, it is awful. <laughs> ring, I, I'm talking about he has two or three headbands. We have to stop for him to ring out his headband because the people behind him are either about to throw up or just like, you know what, damn this. I'm just, I don't even want to ride anymore. I'm going to shut this shit down. I call an Uber because this is terrible. <laughs> Like, why are you sweating so bad? And I, I asked him all the time. I was like, Tom, dude, what, what the hell's going on? He was like, yeah, you think I'd be skinny. I was like, well, you're not fat either, but you sweat like you're a big guy. And I'm talking about, bro, we 30, 40 degrees. It's cold. Everybody, like, nobody's sweating. And you look at Tom, and I'm talking about Tom is like, it's like he like a hoe in church. Like, I'm talking about he's sweating, sweating. I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about like Michael Jackson at a kids convention. Sweat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like this is, hey. this is how Tom is sweating, right? Now we get to Bill. I and and I, I can't make this up. Bill, when he was at the University of Memphis, they had the number one defense in the country. And we fight about this all the time because that year they had the number one defense in the country and they went fucking three and nine, okay? Number one defense in the country. Couldn't score a point. They would win games six to three or or nine to seven or 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 something like that. Whenever they were able to win games. Never played on national TV. Never was on TV. Nobody even knew who they was. I mean, they was people were getting drafted and stuff like that, but nobody knew who they was because they was they was at Memphis and they didn't have the offense. They didn't have a coaching staff. And you know, that's where Bell comes from when he talks about the Tennessee game, because they did beat Tennessee. They, that's that's all. That's all you know about that team that he played on is that they beat Tennessee. You don't know anything else. You don't know their record. They never played in the bowl game. And I told him, I said, man, you know, it was great seeing you on TV because the only way you made it on TV was as a coach. When he coached them, they went to a bowl game. And he, <laughs> he got his ring coaching. OK, let's make sure we point that out. OK, so <laughs> now we're going to go to the table. I, I, I can't make this up. Fuck you, table. <laughs> Fuck you. That's all I'm gonna say about you. That's all I'm gonna say about you. That's my brother-in-law. You know, I, I, I love him to death. He's the worst. I, I'm tell, He's the worst golfer in the world. He's one of those that will go out. He would go to all these country clubs, man. He would go to. Uh, I'm talking about six, seven hours, bro. Fucking awful. Like awful. Like, hey, man, how, how did you do, man? Like, oh man, I was four or five over par with a. 32 handicap like how the fuck do you do that like you're awful you guys don't know anything about golf so i wouldn't expect y'all billy and dylan my trainers you know they were right i i i am very yeah they they got me out. that's me i don't i don't like working out if reese don't go i'm not going she's the reason why i have to go and i hated it suck it absolutely sucked i i would i thought retirement was gonna go hey I don't have to go in. I thought my retirement was going to be like Gary, playing video games, eating, drinking, whatever I want to do, not leaving the house, but always busy. Can't answer the phone, can't text, none of that, because I got something I got to do later, which probably in ter turns around, I'm playing video games or something like that. But Billy, the tough guy that was talking about me, he decided that he wanted to do the diathlon. He was going to go the 3.4 miles. He was going to do the 53 miles on the bike bike without training because he was like shit if you can do it d'angelo i can do it <laughs> ask him how that went next time you talk to him since y'all want to talk shit <laughs> ask him how it went <laughs> dealing the same way oh yeah <laughs> i can't wait to get here oh be fun so <laughs> i now our relationship was based on facts i knew he was a fat guy on a bike and that at some point he was gonna get in trouble i there's been one ride. We probably rode together 46 times, and only one time we rode together where he didn't have a flat. And I didn't blame it on his weight. I said, that, hey, you know, it's not you. <laughs> and Tom suggested, like, man, you should probably get some run flat tires or some of those NASA tires that they're coming out with where you don't get flat. So, you know, when I first got behind him, because everybody we ride with have somewhat of a cycling body outside of Tom and be fun. Everybody got a cycling body. So when you try to get behind them and catch that draft, you don't get it. So the first time I saw Be Fun, I was like, fuck, dude, you look like Bowser on a scooter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I said, I said, you look like Bowser on a scooter. And like we got to ride more. And I'm like, oh shit. Like he's throwing off like authority vibes. Like, you know how you could just feel like somebody a snitch on you? Like you just kind of feel that. Like I felt it and I was like, yo, he might be somebody that I need on my team because if some shit go down, he'll be able to tell it and he'll be able to tell it without being like traumatized on telling it because he was one of those people, right? So he had the, he had these socks on, man. And I, I don't know if the socks was too small or he just liked his socks tight. But when he had pulled them down, you could see the impression. I, I'm pretty sure that the, the, the socks had a death grip on his legs because he got these big ass tree trucks. And he knew them damn socks was too small because he had a hole in them. He knew they was too small. He pulled them damn things up and his socks was like, fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you what his nemesis is, though. I'm gonna tell you what B Fun Nemesis is. He's an absolutely a, a unbelievable rider. He he will at some point he's gonna be amazing. He's unbelievable right now, but at some point he's gonna be amazing. But if he see a dog, PTSD is a wrap. He's shutting that shit down. Shutting it down. He's the only person I know hit a dog twice. He hit a dog twice. <laughs> he hit the same dog twice and gonna have a nerd to talk about athletic ability? Did that bet not ever come out your damn mouth? You hit one dog twice. Like <laughs> he was like, it came out of nowhere. I was like, I understand that be fun. You hit it the first time, but now this second time, we gotta talk about it, bro. Like, how you hit the damn dog twice? Twice, and I can't obviously say anything about my wife because I have to live with her. <laughs> I have to live with her. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna plead the fifth. I'm not gonna say anything, but I could tell you this: I got 99 problems, and my wife all of them. <laughs> I love it. That and that's how I'm gonna end that. I really appreciate all of this because these are my core. I don't know how you were able to get it all together, Gary. You and time, but this is absolutely amazing. Uh, the white jokes, as you can see, uh, my friends, uh, I got black ones, I got white ones, I got people from the Middle East. Uh, we we just, this is us. This is me. If you want to know who I am, my crew, these are my guys, everybody that they brought on today. This is, this is my village. Now, within this village, there's a lot of people in my village that I wouldn't let raise my kids, okay? But... <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, Gary, you're one of them. You're one of the ones <laughs> that raised my kids. <laughs> yeah. Be fun. Are you I trying to say you. there's a lot of? I, you trying to say there's a lot of village idiots? <laughs> I, I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you this. Tom, for instance, like can't go within 150 feet of uh, any school. He hadn't told us why. I, I didn't ask any questions because I like him as a guy and I don't want his reasoning to ruin that. So we just don't even ask him about it. We don't even ask him about it. He has like uh he has tattoos. I, I don't know where these tattoos come from. It looked like little kids drew on them. I don't know if they drew on them or they was trying to get out of the cages that he keep them in or what. I don't know what it is. Oh my I, God. I, I'm just saying that we accept Tom from a distance. We just ride bikes together because I, apparently in his, his his regular life, he's not a good guy, but that's not but <laughs> that's not how we know him. So because we don't know him like that, I can't talk bad about him. Okay, but I love them for <laughs> for the role that they play in my life. Uh, I wouldn't be the person that I am today without all of you guys: Tom, B Fun, Bill, Romeo, Gary, Dylan, Billy, my wife, uh, Tom. Uh, and if I left anybody off, you know, I apologize. But thank you guys so much. You've made this birthday. One to remember because I don't I don't really celebrate birthdays and I hate when the wife come up and like do birthday parties and want to hang out and do like all that crazy shit. But I, I love this right here, man, just the talking shit and like having fun with my guys. And this is this has been amazing, man. I really appreciate y'all. man. And just so you know, you won't know until you go back and watch the podcast. But there will be another person added on. I got a video that's going to be added on, so you'll have to wait and see what that is. And thanks to the magic of post-editing, here is that clip. Yo, D'Angelo, happy birthday, bro. But I got a question. How are you going to let a dude named Bad Bunny, 
a motherfucking bunny outshine you as the best celebrity wrestler of all time. All you had to do was hit the frog splash on the fucking table and not miss the fucking table and hit your fat, ugly, nappy, dread-headed face on the fucking canvas. Fuck. You had two months to hit a fucking frog splash on the table and you fucked it up. Well, happy fucking birthday, birthday bro. But I, I, this Who is what is? I don't understand. How did you get these? I can't get these assholes on time for anything. How did you get them on time? Like, I saw people bouncing in and out. I'm like, how the hell did he arrange this? I mean, I know Tom <laughs> got all the time in the world. So you that no, wasn't it's even just, it's, it's It's part of the love of destroying D'Angelo. I exactly. think that's part of what it was. This is everybody wanting to get their shots in because we never get to talk around you. You always are the talker. We never get to get our piece in. So everybody wanted their opportunity. And it wasn't just me. It was me and Reese together. You know, we make a strong power couple, hence why we have some kids together. <laughs> so and I appreciate you being a good father to my kids. So it's great. And, uh, yeah. hey, this was awesome. I know yeah. you didn't expect this at I all, did. D. Did. And that was the whole purpose. We wanted to surprise, make it a big thing. And, and we appreciate everybody coming on. It was an awesome experience. I, I just got one question. Go ahead. How did you get Tom on on time with him being on parole? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you got to improve the gotta, I, officer. This has been in works for a couple weeks. So <laughs> His parole uh, officer said it was cool because, you know, my daughter was in the camera. He, You know he can't be that close to kids. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay. hey. I, I just had to keep the, the van out of the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just clarify. He's saying Tom, because I know a lot of y'all get mixed up between Tom and Tom. He's talking about Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, I'll let you bring time. I'll let you bring us out for the uh, so uh, yeah. it was great. All right, guys. Well, we again we appreciate everybody coming on. This was fun. D'Angelo, you know we love you and we appreciate you. And uh, we wouldn't be here today without you as well. And make sure you tune in to the Cinnamon Sugar Podcast again next week. Also, if you've been missing any of our Serve the Story episodes that we've been putting on our YouTube, you need to go check those out immediately. They are so good. Nick Will made it is a great, great job he's doing with our YouTube channel. So make sure you go check that out. And we'll be back next week with another episode of the Cinnamon Sugar Podcast. We out! You are now listening to the Cinnamon and Sugar Podcast featuring D'Angelo Williams and Gary Barnage. You push play and they'll push the limit.